I've been using Windows on Steam Deck for the last two months, and it's been a roller coaster of experience. There was a lot of struggles in the beginning, and then it got really good, and it got really bad, then it's come back to being really good. And I thought I'd share what I've learned over the last two months, and my experience with that. Some things I would like to clear up from my last video though, real quick. On my original video about this, I talked about how I installed Windows on my Steam Deck. And what I originally did specifically was I took a drive out of a laptop that I had that I wasn't using anymore that had a Windows installation on it. And I was like, sweet. So I popped that into my Steam Deck without a care in the world. And I did run into some problems, but I did not install Windows on a laptop separately just to put that into my Steam Deck. That seemed to be a common misconception with how I worded it last time, but that was not the case. That's really dumb. And the problems I encountered when just swapping over a pre-existing Windows installation onto my Steam Deck weren't anything that like broke it or, you know, stopped the Steam Deck from working. It just didn't like the, the going through like the reconfigurating setup. So all I did was just, you know, go to the recovery options and just basically reinstalled Windows. It took like an extra five minutes worth of troubleshooting to get to that to that point where Windows was basically reinstalling. And then after like 20 or 30 minutes of Windows installing and then updates installing all that stuff, it was back to normal. It was never a problem that I had, but I thought I'd mention that specifically because there was some confusion about that in my previous video. Some of the things I've learned over these couple months have been just learning to navigate the system better. Windows is innately a, a, you know, keyboard and mouse focused operating system compared to SteamOS, which was far more equipped for, you know, touch inputs. So figuring out scaling options and stuff like that was a little bit of a tricky sort of situation for the Steam Deck and Windows. And after adjusting the scaling to something that I would feel comfortable with, so making it easier for me to hit the touch targets, life got a lot easier. Something that I've also struggled with in this t in these last couple months has been getting the controls to work in some games, especially games that aren't from Steam. And I solved this through a few different ways. In the past, I recommended in my previous video, the SWICD drivers to basically let the con uh, controls on the Steam Deck register as an Xbox controller, which they would work like half the time, which it wasn't a perfect solution, but it was working, generally speaking, when I needed it to. And my one major, you know, downside with that is it disabled the touchpads, which made navigating a whole lot more annoying if I had those on and I was doing multiple things at the same time. But after, you know, a couple months of dealing with that, I found a new solution using something called the Handheld Companion, which is just an amazing application that I found. It makes navigating the whole device a lot easier. It, I have it bound to the three dot button on the Steam Deck controls, pushing that will activate a quick menu that can open in no, middle of the game, out of game, full screen, borderless, it opens whenever I, I need it to. It allows me to have a selection of quick actions, something especially one of my favorite quick actions are force closing any stalling application. You have no idea how convenient that is. It's basically an Alt F4 button. It's fantastic and it has come in handy so many times when uh, Yuzu stalls and the games crash and I need to, you know, force close it because I can't interact with it any other way. Whenever a uh, game stalls or there's no easy way to close a game or if there's a problem with the game with the controls. For example, when I was trying to set up LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga, it had a problem not really detecting the controls, even with when I would plug it into a dock setup and it wouldn't even detect the keyboard and mouse. So it was an issue really with the game. And when I would get stuck in those situations, the only way I was able to close it was going activating my quick menu and then force closing the application. Normal Alt F4 with a connected keyboard and mouse still wouldn't work either. So just having an application installed, regardless of whether or not it was the intended application of it, was super convenient. It even has applications inside it that allow you to control, you know, power level, uh, control TD TDP, cooling it's so convenient and has radically eased my burden in windows compared to something like the old controller driver that i used in the past this is more of an encompassing you know overhaul for usability it's something that 
is really nice to have and even has its own on-screen keyboard that you can activate from the quick menu. It's one of the many side features in the quick actions menu that I use the most. Because not only is this keyboard you can pull out, you can customize when you can, you know, make it a small one that you can drag around and just have it on screen at all times. Or you can have it like a sort of a standard on-screen keyboard that comes up from the bottom and encompasses like the bottom half of the screen. Which is nice too if you like that full-size keyboard experience. But I'm usually doing multiple things at the same time. So it's nice to be able to have the tiny keyboard to just use with my thumb in the bottom corner and or at the top corner depending on what I'm doing uh, for ease of use than it is to actually have a more comfortable overall typing experience. This application alone has basically convinced me that I don't need to go back to SteamOS ever and I still have that original you know flash card technically because I started with the 64 gigabyte model with my original SteamOS installation on it that I can go back to in case something goes wrong and I will always keep that just in case this breaks for some reason because technically it's not officially supported but it's supported. Windows on SteamOS is kind of weird. But besides that, something I wish would have happened in this, you know, two months that I've had my Steam Deck was official support for, you know, dual booting, which is obviously what I would prefer most because just the easeability of just switching between the two would be so much nicer. And I know there is currently, you know, non-official dual booting methods, but I just was never really comfortable with that. And it was far more complicated than what an official solution could be. Because the many benefits of SteamOS originally, it had better performance in certain games. Games like Tiny Tina's Wonderland performed arguably better on SteamOS than they did in Windows. You know, Halo Infinite performed better in SteamOS than it did on Windows. So it's stuff like that where I wish I'd be able to switch between the two operating systems rather than having to choose between better performance in certain games or a wider game compatibility, which I obviously chose more game compatibility than having better performance. Because while I not be able to play every single game I would like that uh, I could have if I stayed on SteamOS, I can at least play other in more of the games I owned, especially taking advantage of something like Game Pass uh, Ultimate. Being able to download all any game that's on there would be really nice to do on SteamOS, but you simply can't even properly install the launcher. You, you can only get as close as installing the you know the cloud streaming part of it. They're a really complicated you know installation process. Even Microsoft themselves have an entire article talking about how to do this, and it's really long. And I just truly did not care enough to get it to work and speaking of other things like i would get like heroic installed or the bravery launcher or something like that to install games from the epic game store which simply was just so annoying to do on steam deck and really hit or miss for me whether or not they would even work in the first place and i get that's a lack of knowledge and ability on my part but it shouldn't be that complicated to get some of these things to work and I don't entirely blame Valve for this, it's just the problems using with Linux. And I do like Linux, it has a lot of potential. It's just so close to being a, you know, a perfect experience. It's so close to being something that I could genuinely consider. But on the basis of that, it doesn't have my all the games I would like to play available on it because of anti-cheat problems. Uh, just general usability problems that are generally easier to deal with on Windows, not saying that it's better or it doesn't have those problems, it's just easier to manage. And all those things come, you know, come together for me saying it's just an easier overall experience if you want, you know, all of the games to be played to just use this on Windows rather than sticking with SteamOS, which isn't to say that SteamOS isn't bad or good or anything like that. SteamOS is amazing. It's just doesn't have everything I need it to be to for what I want it to be exactly. The last thing we're going to talk about is my one major problem that I had in my entire time using this device on Windows. There was a driver update that released um, about a month into my time with the device that radically changed the performance characteristics for this device and not necessarily for the better. I went from being able to play games like Destiny 2 very well it, and you know at like 45 to like 50 FPS most places to 
barely the game getting past 20 and it's constantly fluctuating all over the place. Frame pacing was awful. It was just an overall much worse experience after the installation of this new driver update from Valve. And it was gone as far as it made <clears throat> most games generally unplayable. <laughs> That at least the games I wanted to play. Elden Ring went from being pretty good to being unplayable. Borderlands 3 went from pretty good to unplayable. Most of these games that I liked to play on my Steam Deck were went from good to very, very bad. And I just simply couldn't fix it. I couldn't figure out what the problem was. My only course of action was to roll back my driver and reinstall the previous driver version I was on. And then everything was back to normal. And that's, I don't necessarily blame Valve for that. I mostly blame AMD, who historically have been very hit or miss with their drivers. I personally have an RX 6600 XT in my Media Center PC, and that has plagued me with problems ever since the beginning. I've been basically testing drivers going back and forth from newest to oldest to see what works best. And I landed on a driver set from like back in April of last year. So it's not necessarily Valve's fault for why this randomly happened to me, but I still think it's something to consider. That's the problem that you wouldn't necessarily encounter on the SteamOS. You most likely only see this in Windows, considering it's a Windows separate, you know, driver development. It doesn't use the same driver as it does in SteamOS. It doesn't have those same optimizations SteamOS has to maybe help mitigate those problems. But even with all of that, just rolling back the driver, it took me five minutes to one, find the driver, install it, and then go back to normal, and then do some testing, and performance went back to normal. So while it's not a perfect experience, Windows on Steam Deck is the way I'm gonna be going for the rest of my time with the Steam Deck, unless dual booting officially comes out, which we all hope it does, but I don't see it coming out until Half-Life 3 does too. That was a joke. Because neither are probably coming out. What are your thoughts? Are you going to try installing Windows after this? I'm super curious. Have you used Windows on your Steam Deck this whole time? You know, how, what are your experiences with it? I'd love to hear your thoughts, questions, comments, and concerns down below. Don't forget to leave a, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.